So as you can see here, I'm going over the forestry mod. And now the first thing it adds into your world are three new ores. You got copper, tin, and appetite, if that's how you pronounce that. And you can see the ores right there and their individual blocks. Now, keep in mind that this mod has a bunch of correlations with the Industrial Craft 2 mod. That's what this block is right here. This is bronze, which you get if you combine both copper and tin. And you use Industrial Craft 2 machines to make this block right here in the ingot. So keep that in mind as we're going through this mod. So we got a couple basic items here we got the grafter and the proven grafter now to make the grafter all you need is two sticks and a bronze ingot so you can see it's going back and forth between ic2 mod and the forestry mod so that is what i meant by that bronze block right up there now the proven grafter cannot be made it can only be found at a village and traded for as you can see behind me next we have loam and this is five clay two sand and two compost and to make compost it's four wheat and any type of dirt in the middle then we have a wood pile. To make this, all you do is take four of any type of logs or whatever, and you'll get one of those. Now, the way you use this loam and wooden pile is very simple. All you have to do is set it in a pattern like this. You can see I have five on the bottom and one on top like that. And then you just cover up all the wooden piles with the loam. And now that loam protects the wood from burning. So when you light this pile on fire, the wood's not just going to burn away. Instead, it will cook for like 10 minutes-ish in real time. And then once that's done, all these wooden blocks underneath there are going to turn into ash blocks which you can then break to get ash and uh, charcoal so if you need any charcoal or fuel or whatever or ash this is how you get that another thing i wanted to quickly go over is how this mod adds a bunch of different types of fruits and nuts and all that type of stuff you can gather these from trees and all that very simple it's kind of like getting an apple from an apple tree so it has all these different fruits that you can of course eat and use for cooking now it also adds backpacks now you can see we got a mining digging foresting hunting building and an adventuring backpack and then we also have an apparists and lepidopterists whatever but you can see we got all these different types of backpacks and they have their own kind of upgraded version as you can see it has 45 slots and now how these backpacks work is depending on the field that you're in they will automatically put certain blocks that you gather into the backpack so for example the digging backpack will store sand clay dirt gravel all that type of stuff and it'll put it in its own stacks and all that and so you know the hunting backpack any animals you kill any skin meat that you gather will go into that backpack and then of course with these two backpacks i I believe this is butterflies and this is some type of trees uh okay it's bees next slot you can see uh we don't have a chest and that's because the amount of wood and types of trees this mod adds is ridiculous as you can see all the saplings all different berries and pollen and then all of the different types of wood and wooden things that you can make now one very cool thing that this mod adds look at those cool doors i mean look at that it's so cool now one of the things that this mod adds is fireproof wood which is well awesome so Right here, this Cobola, whoa, but that is just weird, is fireproof. And as you can see, we got a bunch of other wood here that is also fireproof. Now, this wood is my favorite because you can see how awesome these plank looks. I mean, come on. If you don't use that for a horror game, I don't know what. <laughs> but yeah, just a ton of different woods. Very, very cool. And so, of course, I just wanted to show that because you already know how to gather and use wood. Next, we have some bees. And now, unfortunately, you're not just going to be able to make this apparatus suit immediately so that you don't get stung. You have to get stung a little bit first and gather some honeycombs down here, particularly this one. Because in order to make this, you're going to need to put it just in the usual armor slot, like uh, if you're going to make a chest plate or a hat or whatever. And But you need to place woven silk in there. And now, the thing with woven silk is it takes silk wisp in the carpenter. And this is a very common machine that I'll get to later. And to make this, you're going to need to put a silky prop in the centrifuge to get that and then just a normal propolis now how do you get this well you need to place a silky comb in the centrifuge and you'll get a honey drop and then that so as you can see you need to gather this first which means that you're gonna have to go buy a beehive which is not going to be the greatest because you will get stung next we have the habitat locator and how to make this is just four bronze and a redstone this basically just gives you information about the habitat you're in we have the scoop as you can see you use to break hives and to collect bees and it's just six sticks and any type of wool then we have the bee smoker. Now this is what calms the bees so that you don't get stung. And it takes five tin ingots, a flint and steel, a stick, and then two leather. Next we have the bee house. And to make this, it is three of any type of slabs, five of any type of planks, and then any type of comb in the middle. Then you've got the apiary, and this is basically the upgraded version of the bee house. You're going to take an impregnated casing with the same type of wood structure on the outside. Now the upgraded version of the bee house is the apiary. Now to make this, it's the same type of wood on the outside, but 
then you have an impregnated casing in the middle. And to make this, you need to place eight of any type of logs in the carpenter, and it's very simple to get. Then right here, I've got a basic four screen right here, and now this is just the most generic queen you're gonna find, especially before you start doing a bunch of mutations, which happen in these houses right here, but I'll get to that later. Now, in order to have these houses work, you're gonna need some frames right here. And now to get the untreated frame, it's just eight of any sticks surrounding a string. The impregnated frame is eight impregnated sticks surrounding a string, and to make this, it's just two of any type of wood in the carpenter. You'll get two of those. Then you've got the proven frame. Now this can't be crafted. This can only be traded for at a village. Next, we have a bunch of different hives. Now these are you're just gonna find all around the world in different uh, biomes and all that stuff. As you can expect, the wintry hive is not going to spawn in the desert. So, you know, this habitat locator also helps to let you know which hive you're probably gonna find in the area. In fact, it's gonna be pretty easy just to even find a hive out here like this. Yep, see right there, right next to this village is already one of those red hives. So they're pretty easy to see. And of course, be careful when approaching because there are bees swarming around them. And now, as you'd expect, all these different types of hives are going to produce all these different types of honeycombs. So you can expect the wintry hive produces the frozen honeycomb. A normal hive produces just honeycomb. All that type of stuff. And once you gather the hive, that's when you'll get that honeycomb. Now, also, I want to go over another cool feature that's added, and those are crates. And now, it's the same machine, the carpenter. As I said, it's very common common machine. And now how crates work is they basically uh, save storage. So you can see you've got, you know, apples, you've got fertilizer, all this type of stuff that can be crated. And it's basically taking all nine items and putting it into one crate so you can get a stack of crates when that's actually 64 times nine. So it's another way to really store your items more effectively. Going over the last couple items in this chest here, we have the honeycomb block. And as you expect, it's just a block out of any type of those honeycombs. Next, we got some candles. And to make the candle, it's very simple. All you have to do is place two beeswax and a silk wisp in the carpenter, and you'll get six of those and then when they burn out it'll be this candle stump right there all you have to do is take a flint and steel and right click on it and it's lit up like a torch finally we have the portable analyzer now to make this you're going to need four tin ingots two of any type of stained glass planes planes and to make this work you're going to need some honey drops and now you find honey drops when you break hives when you know when bees are mutating in your houses right here and there's even one when you're using this guy right here in order to make that silk wisp that i went over before you can see you get a honey drop right there so i'm gonna go ahead and take a stack of that and then an oak sapling. Now, everything in this world when you start off is unknown. As you can see, it says under there, under the oak sapling. Now, that's what this portable analyzer is for. When I go ahead and place this honey in there, it's now powered. And if I place this tree right here, it tells me the species, the saplings, how mature it is, the height, all the type of stuff and how effective it is and all that. So it just lets you know which plants are better, where they come from, and just details about the plants. And now these different levels right here will give more information. Like right here, it says, no, it's not fireproof. You need soil from planes, all that type of stuff, and you can keep going down what it produces, and then possible mutations, which you have to figure out, and then you know you got classifications, which are actually very accurate. Now, the last chest I'm doing this part one are farms, and now you've got a bunch of different types of farms for a bunch of different types of crops. You can see you got trees, you've got normal crops, and then you've got mushrooms, and melons, and pumpkins, nether warts, chorus flowers, and enter lilies, and then peat farms. And now these are the smaller farms, and this down here is the much bigger farm as you can see that's behind me and now to make just a normal farm all you need is four of any type of glass three golden electron tubes a flexible casing and a basic circuit board now the flexible casing to make it it's just a thermonic fabricator and you take two emeralds two slime balls and four of any bronze with any type of sand in there and you'll get this and then for these golden electron tubes you're going to take five gold two redstone a glass sand sandstone whatever and the same machine and then finally, for this circuit board, you're going to need six redstone and a tin in the carpenter. Now I'm going to go over all these machines and other machines that you haven't even seen yet in part two. And that will be coming out in one week, so stay tuned for that. And now how these small farms work, as you can see, you've got a managed one and a manual one. And as you'd expect, the managed one is automatic and the manual one, you have to set up everything yourself. So I don't really know why you choose this one, but you know, whatever. And now also you have a database. Now to make this, it's two bronze ingots, a portable analyzer, a sturdy casing, two of any type of wood, a royal jelly, and then apris chest, and an arborist chest. And to make the apris chest, it's five any type of honeycomb, any type of chest, and a blue stained glass. And now to make the arborist chest, you need any type of trees, any type of glass, and then a chest are there. And then finally, to make the sturdy casing, you're going to need eight bronze ingots. Then you also have a database. And as you can see, this crafting recipe is a little complex. So I'll go over this in part two as well. So now since we move a little farther away, I want to go over this farm. Now, this farm works the exact same uh, as 
all the other types of farms except this one you can only put trees in it instead of you know certain crops or whatever and now this engine right here it's a peat fired engine and all you have to do is place peat in it and then apply a redstone signal and it'll produce electricity because as i said this works with the ic2 mod for electricity powering machines and all that now i'll go over all the engines this mod the forestry mod adds in part two but for right now we got this engine and this farm right here and all you have to do is first add some water here and now remember you can have pumps you know pump water in here from the ic2 mod so it's just very useful then we got some fertilizer up here and now we're going to place some dirt down and some saplings right here and now as you can see around me it's starting to place this dirt and so it'll continue to do that then start placing and planting the trees also you can see anything that's destroying or picking up you can grab from right there and now this also is where things that the trees produce will be placed so if you've got an apple tree and it starts producing some apples you'll be able to pick that up here so once the farm fills up, it'll start kind of harvesting the trees and all that stuff as it's an automatic tree farm. I also have one set up over here that's been going for a little while. You can see it's got a complete ring around it. It's got all the trees perfectly lined up. It's just like this thick wall of birch and oak. Now that was the smaller version of the farm. These are the much bigger versions of the farms. Now to make this, you're going to need some stone bricks and then you're going to need a farm block, which is a stone brick, two copper ingots, and two of any type of wood slabs, and then a tin electron tube, which is tin instead of the gold uh, in the previous recipe that I showed. Then you've got a farm gear box and to make this you take a farm box and three tin gears and to make it it's just four tin ingots and a copper ingot. Then we've got a farm hatch and this is a farm block, a wooden trapdoor and two tin gears. We've got a farm valve which is a farm block, a tin gear and two of any types of glass. Then we've got farm control which is a farm block, two redstone and a golden electron tube. So right here we got the small farm and the large farm and now they're both the same and that they're four blocks tall and the first three layers are all just these farm blocks right here but the bottom layer is going to be farm blocks except you're going to need a gearbox a valve and a hatch on the bottom now you don't need the farm control that just stores information but you can add it in there if you want and now as you can see if i go ahead and break this that ring goes away and then once i place it back it comes back that's because it is actually completing the farm and that shows that it's been completed now at that level where that ring is that's where you're going to want to place these blocks and now in the small farm you're going to need to place six blocks outward and right here i do have a small farm and so you're going to place it all the way around this uh farm right here and now to, you can leave it like this if you want but i would prefer to set it up this way where you have the farm extending underground like such now you can see i have another one of those generators right here and now this farm it's going to need water or fertilizer and then you know it's for this is a tree farm and then you can place your dirt and then you've got this stuff that's harvesting in here so it's very similar to the other farm in that it's automated and all that but you know if you want something to pump in the fertilizer the water and electricity and all that then all you have to do is just get all your certain machines down here or whatever and then you know if you need a big water source or whatever to have the pipes come to this and so then all the machine or the brains behind the machine is going to be down here and now over time as you can see it's the same story with that farm over there where it's just kind of this thick wall of trees and blocks so this farm automatically harvests it and as you can see there was already a section in there where it had started to gather some of the resources from this but you could place you know wheat and carrots or anything that those other small farms can also hold and uh yeah that's pretty much it for these farms it just really automates and allows you to grow a ton of things very quickly so that's pretty much it for the part one of the forestry mod and now in part two i'm gonna go over some more machines some miscellaneous items and some queen mutations and all that but for right now thank you guys for watching if you liked it leave a like and subscribe also comment down below any questions you have for the mod any other mods or content you'd like me to make or you just want to see but i'll see you all in the next video high five